Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of agriculture and pest management. Have you ever wondered how farmers keep their crops healthy and thriving while minimizing risks to the environment and human health? Let's kick things off by defining what integrated pest management, or IPM, really is. IPM is an ecosystem-based strategy used to tackle pest problems in various settings, be it urban, agricultural, or natural areas. It's all about long-term pest prevention by utilizing a combination of techniques. These techniques can include biological control, habitat manipulation, cultural practice modification, and the use of resistant plant varieties. The key takeaway is that pesticides are used as a last resort, only when monitoring indicates their necessity and with a strong focus on minimizing risks to the environment, human health, and non-target organisms. Pests are organisms that cause damage or interference with desirable plants in fields, orchards, landscapes, or even wildlands. They can also impact human or animal health, either by transmitting diseases or simply being a nuisance. Pests come in various forms, including plants like weeds, vertebrates like birds or rodents, invertebrates such as insects and ticks, nematodes, and even pathogens like bacteria, viruses, or fungi. In essence, pests are unwanted organisms that can harm ecosystems, water quality, or other aspects of our environment. So, how does IPM work? IPM is all about proactive pest management, focusing on preventing pests from becoming a problem in the first place. This can be achieved by growing healthy crops that can withstand pest attacks, using disease-resistant plant varieties, or taking measures to seal entry points to prevent insects or rodents from entering buildings. Instead of simply eliminating visible pests, IPM involves considering the environmental factors that affect the pest's ability to thrive. Monitoring and accurate pest identification are crucial steps in the IPM process. Monitoring entails regularly checking the area in question to identify which pests are present, their population levels, and the damage they've caused. Accurate identification of the pest is vital for determining whether it's likely to become a problem and selecting the most appropriate management strategy. IPM isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. It involves a combination of various management approaches that work better when used together. Biological control, this entails using natural enemies like predators, parasites, pathogens, and competitors to keep pest populations in check. These natural enemies can target invertebrates, plant pathogens, nematodes, weeds, and even vertebrates. Cultural controls, these practices aim to reduce pest establishment, reproduction, dispersal, and survival. For instance, adjusting irrigation practices can help reduce pest issues, as excessive water can lead to root diseases and weed growth. Mechanical and physical controls, these methods either directly eliminate pests, block their access, or create an environment that's unsuitable for them. Mechanical control could involve traps for rodents, while physical control includes using mulches to manage weeds, steam sterilization of the soil to combat diseases, or barriers like screens to keep birds and insects out. Chemical control, pesticides are used in IPM, but only when absolutely necessary. They are chosen and applied in a way that minimizes harm to humans, non-target organisms, and the environment. Selective and safe pesticide use is a core principle of IPM. These principles and practices are combined to create IPM programs. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.